Have you ever wondered how to create your own motion graphic titles like these? Well, today I'm going to show you how to master text animations in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I've got five techniques for you to learn that are going to look really slick in your videos. But what's even better is that there are hundreds of different ways that you can reuse these techniques in order to come up with your own unique titles. Let's get into it. Now, before we animate anything, we first need to design what our text is going to look like. And there's a few little neat tricks in Fusion that you're going to want to learn if you're new to the program. So I'm going to create a new Fusion composition by dragging it into our timeline from the effects panel. And then I'll jump into the Fusion page using the tab below. So from here, I'm going to grab this little guy here. This is the text plus node. And I'm going to drag this into our composition and connect the little output to the input of our media out. Now, when I was first working with the Text Plus node in Fusion, I remember being pretty confused about how to do some really simple things like changing the color of individual words or creating a stroke outline, but it's actually really simple to do. I'm just going to add in a few words here. Subscribe for more videos. And I'm going to left align this text by hitting this little anchor icon here. Then I'll move this off to the left just using the controls in the viewer. We can then come over to the shading tab and this lets us do a bunch of cool things. So first of all, you'll notice here that we have four options in the appearance section. If we click on the transparent one, our text changes to outlines only. And with this control here, we could just adjust the thickness of the outlines. Now this is a cool look on its own, but if we wanted to keep the solid part of the text too, then we need to use these elements here. Each one of these numbers represents a whole new set of these controls and you could start to layer these up. So on the first one, I could select solid. And then on the second one here, if I enable this, this defaults to a red outline, but we can make it any color we like. Now you could do a lot with this shading tab. So it's one you're going to want to play around with. It's very easy to miss if you're just new to Fusion. But in the meantime, I'm just going to reset our text here. Because what I really want to do is I want the word subscribe to stand out by making it a different color. And from the actual text editor, we're going to right click this and select character level styling. Now you'll notice up here, it lets us select the modifiers tab. And if you click on this, then you should be able to highlight multiple characters within the viewer here and control the styling for these independently. So I can change the font of individual words or even the color. And I can even change the size and position of whole lines of text by just highlighting them and adjusting them in the modifier window. Now, this is really powerful and using a mixture of these controls, you can design some really great looking text. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have a look at is some simple movement animations like these. I've created a background here and I've merged this with a text plus node. And then this has been fed into our media out node. Now with our text node selected, we're going to come up to our layout tab here and using this center control, we could come up to about frame 30 and click this little icon. This is going to set our first keyframe. I'll then move the playhead back to frame zero. And then using this little arrow control here, we'll move our text out of frame to the left, which sets another keyframe for us. And if you play that back, you'll see that you've got a very basic movement going on. It's a bit boring and it's a bit slow. So how do we make this slicker? Well, one thing we could do is adjust the easing of our movements. Now, if I open up the spline editor here by clicking up here, we could see our two keyframes we just set and the movement graph between them. So I'm going to highlight both of these and right click on them and go to ease out back cubic. And this creates a nice little overshooting animation. It's one of my favorites to use. Now it's a little over the top just now. So I'm going to click the first keyframe here and I'll just pull this little handle down just to make it a little bit more subtle. Another thing we could do to spice this up a little bit is just add some rotation to the word as it slides in. Now down here in the layout section, we have a bunch of controls for the rotation. The Z control lets us rotate along the Z axis. So at frame 30 again, I'm going to set our keyframe at zero. I'll then bring our playhead to the highest point in the overshoot curve, which is round about here. And then I'll give it a really small rotation, say about minus 10. And then I'll drag the playhead back to the first frame and I'll set that to zero again. I'm then going to highlight all these frames and hit F on the keyboard. And this automatically smooths out the keyframes for us. Now, if we play that back, it looks like this. 
So you can see it's kind of overshooting, like it's been pushed into frame there and it's been knocked off balance, so it's quite a cool look. One last thing we could do to really polish this off is just come up to our settings tab here and click on motion blur. And it's little techniques like this that are going to really make a huge difference. Little rotations here and there and motion blur are going to go a long way to selling an effect. And what's great is that you can actually apply this whole technique to different parameters as well. So if we wanted to do a zoom in animation, we just do the same thing. I can use the size and rotation parameters, keyframe them to where I want them later in the timeline, and then stretch them out at the start of the timeline to set another keyframe. I then right click them both in the spline editor and go to ease again and set them both to outback cubic. Add in a little bit of motion blur and then you've got this really cool zoom in title effect. Very easy to do. Now there's no shame in a really simple typewriter style animation and one of the great things is this is actually built into every single text node. So down here at the bottom we have this control called right on. It's got two controls, one for the start and one for the end. And if I move these values here, you can see it writes on and off. So I'll move the end point right to the start, then bring the playhead to frame zero, hit the keyframe, and then move it along to frame 25 and extend it out again. Play that back now and you'll see that that's all you really need to do a really simple typewriter effect. If you bring in a little keyboard sound effect in the edit page, you can really sell that effect even more. But there's actually another way that you can use this. To show you exactly what I mean, I've changed the word in here to word by word. And if I move the end position along to reveal a full word before I set the keyframe, I can then move the playhead along, set another keyframe, and bring the value up to reveal the next word over just one frame. So we're sort of stepping up the values. And if we look in the spline editor again, you see these steps for each of the words. It's a really nice and simple animation and it doesn't take that long to do. So this shape reveal animation is easy to do as well. It just requires a little bit of setup. So first we're going to set up a simple background node and connect this up to our media out. I'm going to pick some nice gradient colors here and then we're going to bring in our text node. I'll choose my font and adjust the size and then connect this up into the chain by dragging the output into the output of the background and that merges them together. So from here we need to add a rectangle mask in. So I'm going to come up here and drag in this little mask node. First I'm going to hook it up to our background node and this lets us create our little rectangle shape. I'm going to just adjust the size of this here so that it fits around our text. Before we do anything with the text we're going to animate our rectangle mask in. And the way I want this to work, I want the height to come in first as a narrow line so I'll first set the width to about 0.008, really narrow so we could just see it. Then I'll bring the height down to zero and set our first keyframe on the height control at frame zero in the timeline. I'll move the playhead to about frame 20 and then bring the height up to the size we want it. Then I'll set another keyframe on the width at this point and move the playhead along further to about frame 50 and set the width to the size we want it to. So far, it should look like this. Next, I'm going to keyframe the x-axis on the rectangle mask, just so it moves from the left of the text to the center at the same time as the width animation. And then I'm just going to quickly go into the spline tab again, and I'm going to ease all these keyframes just so our movements are nice and smooth. Again, if you just highlight these, right click and go to ease, you've got a bunch of easing functions to choose from here. And this time I'm going to select out cubic. And that gives it a nice smooth finish to the movement. Okay, so our rectangle is animating the way we want it, but our text is just sitting on top here. One of the great things about Fusion is that you can actually connect your masks to multiple inputs. So if I just take the output of this rectangle mask and feed it into the blue mask input of the merge node, you'll see it masks our text too because our text is running into this merge. Now you could achieve the same effect by running it into the actual text node. But I've connected it to the merge for a specific reason. With the merge node selected, I can then keyframe the position of our text to move from right to left, the opposite direction of the rectangle as it reveals the text. And this just adds an extra layer of movement to the animation. Again, I'll ease these keyframes on the text in the spline tab to finish off the motion element here. 
To add motion blur, we're going to have to add it in two places. First, we'll add it to our rectangle mask in the settings tab, and then we'll add it to the merge for the movement of the text too. Lastly, I'll just merge another background layer before the media out. And if I hit Command and T or Control T on Windows, this switches so that the background sits behind the animation. And then I'm going to change the color to white too. And that's it. That's the reveal animation. Now, if you wanted to, you could also do the same movements in reverse at the end of the composition so that it animates out as well. The next one's one of my personal favorites, and this is the follower modifier animation. Basically, every letter moves on its own in a kind of follow the leader fashion. So to start, I've got this nice little text title set up here against a gradient background. And we're going to select the text node and come up to our text box here, right click and select follower. Similar to the character level styling trick that I showed you earlier in the video, this is also a modifier. So if we go up to our modifier tab here, we could see this follower. Now there's a whole bunch of controls, but I'm just going to come along to the shading tab here and scroll all the way down to the position section. This is going to allow us to keyframe the movements of our characters. You'd think this would be in the transform section, but for some reason it's not, and I've no idea why. But regardless, the offset control allows us to keyframe the position of each character. So I'll come up to about frame 50 and then hit this keyframe icon. And it's going to pop up with this path modifier and that's totally normal, but there's nothing you need to actually touch in there. So you could just ignore that completely. To navigate back to the follower, we just double click on it up here. I'll then come back to frame zero on the timeline, move this completely out of view using the Y axis. And then if we hit play, the text should move up. Now it's not doing what we want it to yet, but we have this motion and this is the first step accomplished. Now the next step is we want to come over to this timing tab and then this is where we're going to define which letters follow which. And we want this to be set to all characters, left to right, between each character. Which means that this delay slider controls the delay between each character starting from left to right. Now the scale of this is in frames. So if I go to 2 for example, that's going to apply a 2 frame delay between each character. And if we jump back into our spline tab again, we could set up a little overshoot animation by right clicking, going to ease out back cubic. Now we want to put a bit of motion blur on this as well. So we're going to go back into our tools, then settings, and you could click that on from there. And then you've got this really smooth and cool little follower animation. And there's lots you can do with this with different parameters. You could do a size one, for example, and there's even a way to do one word at a time using just one text node and a follower modifier. Now that's a little bit more complicated to set up, so I've saved that for another video. If you're interested in watching that, hit subscribe and let me know in the comments. Now a quick tip for you, if you want to apply multiple modifiers, so let's say you've got some text set up with a follower modifier already on it, just like this one here. And then you also want to apply some character level styling, just to change some of the color of some of the words in this. If you right click on your text here, you'll notice everything's grayed out. It won't let us apply the character level styling. That's because in order to apply a second modifier, you have to apply it from the first one that you set. So if I go up to my follower here, go into the text tab and right click, it'll let me apply another modifier from there. It's just something to watch out for. With each modifier you add, you need to stack them up by adding it to the last one. And then once that's done, you can control them both independently by just jumping into their controls in the modifier tab. One last one, just for a bit of fun. This wiggle animation is one I've seen a lot of in After Effects tutorials. And if you follow the channel, you'll know that I'm all about making that switch away from Adobe to some of the better alternatives that we have on offer. And if you've already mastered the follower animation, this one's really easy to do as well. So once again, we're going to apply a follower to our text here. I'm going to jump over to our shading tab, down to position and what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe a series of random movements. Again you could just ignore this path modifier and come back to the follower. Over time I'm just keying in some jumps up and down. Really random so I'll start by keyframing a small move up and back down on the position values here. I'm also going to go down to rotation and keyframe in some rotations on the z-axis and we're going to span all these movements back and forth a few times over 50 to 60 frames. 
Now it's really important that there's no sense of pattern here. The trick is to make this look really random. We want to try and mix up our keyframes so that the rotations and positions don't land on the same frame all the time. So if I open up my spline tab, you can see what I've done here. And if I play it back, all the letters are moving randomly, but they're in sync, which we don't want. So we'll fix this in a moment, but first, to ensure this loops all the way through in your composition, we're going to highlight all the keyframes in the spline tab and click on this little icon here called Set Loop. And this will just repeat all your animations in a loop indefinitely on your timeline. I'm going to then, with all my keyframes highlighted again, hit F on the keyboard to flatten out all our keyframes. So the last step is just to randomize this. So we're going to jump up to the timing tab here and I'll give this a delay of three so that each letter is out of sync. And then I'm going to set the order to completely random. And if I play this back, you'll see I've got this sort of cute little wiggle animation going on. And there you have it. That's five fusion techniques to help you animate text like a pro. And I'll see you in the next one.